Hello. It's time for health and temperance again. It's our favorite subject. Now, my wife dared me to do this, so with apologies to Smokey Robinson, I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. <laughs> Sunlight is one of the eight natural laws of health. But don't worry, Ralph, you're not in any danger. Vince are supplanted. You know, sunlight has gotten a bad reputation over the past uh, 30 years or so. They say that it causes skin cancer, causes wrinkles, and as we all know, ultraviolet part of the spectrum is completely evil. But is that all true? You know, we've been told that uh, it's one of the eight natural laws of health. And you remember what those are, right? New start. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, exercise, rest, and trust in God. Well, sunlight's one of those. Now, how can it be so evil if it's good? Sunlight is a health necessity. We each need at least 15 minutes a day on our face and arms to get the daily dose of vitamin D that we need. Because vitamin D is manufactured in our skin. Now, I'm sure we all know how that happens, that uh, the cholesterol in our bloodstream, and by the way, you've heard that there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Well, none of it is bad that God made. That is the stuff that's in our, made in our body. There's a plan for it. Even the stuff they call the bad cholesterol, the high-density lipoprotein, if it comes from within our body, it's good. The bad stuff comes from other animals. If you eat another animal, he's got cholesterol in it that's not human cholesterol. And so there's a big difference. But when our cholesterol goes through our bloodstream, through the little tiny capillaries in our skin, and the ultraviolet radiation from the sun hits our skin, it penetrates, and that cholesterol is transformed into vitamin D. It's a wonderful thing. But what happens when the bad animal cholesterol goes through your capillaries and is hit by the ultraviolet radiation? It turns into something other than vitamin D. And it's probably carcinogenic and there we, therefore we get skin cancer from the sunlight if we are eating animal carcasses or the animal's excretions, such as milk and eggs. Just thought you'd like to know that. Now, vitamin D is great stuff. It helps prevent dementia. Sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> It uh, helps prevent prostate cancer, as most of us guys are happy about that, and uh, erectile dysfunction it prevents that, and it prevents schizophrenia. I need to get out in the sun more, don't I? Uh, it prevents heart disease, and uh, it cures excess bilirubin in uh, babies. You know, you see them in the little uh, boxes with the blue lights on them. It's not the blue right light special. They're they're curing the curing the bilirubin buildup in the baby's blood, which is the dead red blood cells that have to be gotten rid of. It improves your sleep and stimulates red blood cell production, which is what we need to oxygenate our body so that we can work and move and do th things. But there is a, a danger of overexposure to the sun. We can get uh, the worst of all is sunburn. As I recall when my wife told me when she came down to, they moved her family moved down to Florida, they went to the beach. And she was from upstate New York and only saw the sun once or twice in her whole life. And, uh, or maybe a little more. But, they get out on the beach, oh boy, they just go to Daytona in the summertime and get out on the beach. Well, she got thoroughly blistered up. So that's not good, that's too much sun. And it does cause some cancer. Like we talked about, when you get uh, the wrong kind of cholesterol in you, you get uh, skin cancers. But the, uh, the kind of cancer that you get from the sun 
is uh, the basal cell or squamous cell cancers, none of which are generally fatal. It's the malignant melanoma, generally on the back, that's not exposed to sun, that's the killer. So the sunlight's not a cancer killer, even if you do eat meat and dairy. But uh, I'm an expert on skin cancer. It runs in my family. My, uh, my grandmother was, maiden name was Sherman, and she was English and very fair-skinned and light-haired, and we had redheads in the family and everything. And I remember my grandmother was all chopped up with skin cancer holes from going to the doctor, and so was my uncle and my mother. And my brother, he had so much chopped out of him, he had a hole in one of his ears, and I told him it looked like somebody shot him through with an arrow. But uh, we had quite a problem with it, and I had it too. When Years ago, when I was a carnivore, I had a big chunk of meat cut out of my shoulder and one on the side of my nose here. And, uh, but since I quit eating those things, that is the carcasses and the animal excrements, that uh, I started to get better. And I haven't had so much of it. I still get a little bit once in a while. As you may have noticed, I had this bullet hole in my forehead for some time. I've been fighting one there. But I do it with uh, some herbal salves now instead of getting large chunks cut out. So there are, there are ways to take care of that stuff. On the other hand, sunlight is a, has a lot of healing properties. It will cure acne, boils, rashes, psoriasis, and impetigo. In the house, sunlight kills bacteria, viruses, yeasts, molds, and mites. You ever noticed how good your sheets and pillowcases smell if you've hung them out in the sunlight for a day before you put them on? That's because of that evil ultraviolet working on the the fibers in there and it's killed all the bad things out and put a fresh new smell in there. It's been oxygenated in the air. That's good stuff. Ellen White wrote the following. In Testimonies, Volume 2, page 527. She says, invalids too often deprive themselves of sunlight. This is one of nature's most healing agents. It's very simple, therefore not fashionable re remedy to enjoy the rays of God's sunlight and beautify our homes with its presence. Fashion takes the greatest care to exclude light from, of the sun from parlors and sleeping rooms by dropping curtains and closing shutters. <clears throat> As though its rays were ruinous to life and health. It is not God who has brought upon us the many woes to which mortals are heirs. Our own folly has led us to deprive ourselves of things that are precious, of blessings which God has provided, which if properly used are of inestimable value for the recovery of health. If you would have your home sweet and inviting, how many people want sweet and inviting homes? I do, and my wife makes a beautiful sweet inviting home. She says, if you want if you would have your home sweet and inviting, make them bright with air and sunshine. Remove your heavy curtains, open the windows, throw back the blinds, and enjoy rich sunlight, even if it be at the expense of the colors of your carpets. The precious sunlight may fade your carpets, but it will give healthful color to the cheeks of your children. If you have God's presence and possess earnest, loving hearts, a humble home made bright with air and sunlight and cheerful with the welcome of unselfish hospitality will be to your family and to the weary travel, traveler a heaven below. Isn't that a nice thought? Sunlight is indeed heavenly. There's a few other additional benefits of sunlight. It's an emotional restorative and it's, uh, it relieves depression. If you're ever depressed, feeling down and low, and sometimes we get that way when it's cloudy and rainy and nasty out all the time. But when that sun comes out, just suddenly, somehow inside, you feel better and happier and you want to go out in it. It relieves depression. A depressed person should go out into the sun. 
There's another cure for depression that I've found, and that's reading Steps to Christ by Ellen White. It cures depression. It also will improve your sleep. Although some of us, it doesn't work all that good. I mean, I worked all day long out in the sunlight the other day and still couldn't sleep. Now, it also is helpful to our children. As Ellen, Wo Ellen White wrote in Health Reformer, April 1st, 1871, she said, one of the most beautiful adornments our rooms can have is its cheering sunlight, gilding and glorifying everything it rests upon. Our children can but have discontented, unhappy, and homesick feelings shut in by walls with windows darkened, excluding the glad sunshine. Some mothers are so anxious to exclude the sun and air from their rooms that they will not allow more than half a window exposed, free from shades, to let in the light and sun. To shut out these blessings as though they were enemies to health and life. The rooms have a dismal, loathsome appearance that children feel though they cannot explain why they feel discontented, languid, and irritable. If the windows should be freed from blinds and curtains, and the air and sun be permitted to freely enter their darkened rooms, there would be seen a change for the better in the mental and physical health of the children. The pure air would have an invigorating influence upon them, happy, joyous, and healthful. We inquire, what is the use of building houses with windows in them when these windows are not used but kept closed and draped to ex exclude light and air? And I guess we need all to ask that of ourselves in our own homes. You know, why do we have windows if we're going to keep them closed? Now, I understand when it's too hot or too cold, you close them down. But when that sun's out and it's not too hot out, let some fresh air with oxygen in there and get out in the sun as much as you can. It's not your enemy. Thank you.